In the last session, we discussed about calendar, currency, chart of accounts and primary ledger. Primarily here, we have to understand chart of accounts. Okay, so these are the points we discussed. In today's session, we are going to discuss about enterprise structure. After completing the enterprise structure related discussions, again, we'll come back to this chart of accounts wherever we have just some sort of mapping between the enterprise structure related information and do chart of accounts will discuss those points. Okay. Right. So when you do the implementation for any company, the company information, the company data, we have to bring into the system. And before we bring the data into the system environment, we have to do the logical segregation for the same data in the system environment. So you are going to do the implementation for ABC company. When you do the implementation for ABC company, what is the data they are managing as per their business process or business? All the data we have to bring into Fusion applications. We have to bring into the Fusion instance. So the total data directly we don't bring into the system without any logic. We have to go with the segregation, data segregation. With the data segregation logic only, we have to move the data into the system environment. What is the primary segregation for any business data before we bring into the system environment? Okay. So very primarily, the data when we are bringing into the system, we have to maintain employees' data separately. Okay. We have to maintain the employees' data separately. How to maintain the employees' data separately, and when any organization is running doing the business, before they start doing the business, they have to go with a registration. Okay, every business we should run with a some legal registration. So company should go with the registration process. With that registration, they have to do the business. So we have to maintain the business re registration information in the system separately. Okay, registration. The legal registration. And the first point is employees data we have to maintain separately and uh, the company registration information also we have to maintain the separate records. And what are the transactions they are doing? The day-to-day -day business activities. Those could be sales or purchases or take any other example of business activity. Those all we have to maintain separately in the system. We call as business transactions. Okay, we have to maintain the business transactions separately. So apart from these business transactions, the stock. Okay, or else warehouse related information. Okay. You can say stock or warehouse, or say simply warehouse. Okay, the warehouse related information or says stock. The warehouse, what are the stock they are maintaining? What are the various items they are managing? Which they purchase from their suppliers or they sell to their customers, whatever it may be, or else they, the business may use that stock material to produce some finished goods also. That could be raw material, whatever it may be. So whatever the stock they have in the warehouse, that also they have to maintain the system separate. This is a very primary classification, how we have to bring the data into system environment. So when you do the fusion implementation for any client, we have to maintain employees information separately in the system and we have to maintain the company registration information, the records separately and the business transaction. When you say business transaction, each department do certain business transactions. They involve in the different business activities. If you take example of purchasing departments, okay, they might, uh, they may raise the requisitions and they record the purchase orders. They may record the receipts or take example inventory. Inventory may record the receipts. And when you talk about a payables department, they create invoices. They process the payments. When you talk about receivables department, 
they do the billing to their customers nothing but sales invoice and when they get payment from the customer they have to record as a receipts so this is how each department performs the relevant transactions based on the activities which they do in the specific department all the business transactions we have to maintain with a separate logic with a separate segregation the same way warehouse or stock what are the organizations dealing with the warehouse stock they may have to maintain the stock separately and the warehouse related transactions also they have to track separately so this is how the total business data we have to segregate and maintain the system with these classifications these are the very primary classifications if you want to maintain employees data separately in the system we have a concept called as enterprise okay by using the concept called as enterprise we can maintain the employees data okay by using the employees data we, to maintain the employees data we have to use the concept called as enterprise with the enterprise concept okay with the enterprise concept we can maintain the employee information to maintain the employees information with the help of enterprise we have to use certain applications which applications we have to use hcm applications hcm stands for human capital management okay to maintain the employees information will we create the logical environment in the system called as enterprise within that enterprise with the help of hcm applications we can maintain the employees information within the enterprise as a part of hcm we have many applications hr payroll ops and talent it's all related to employees only so by using the different hcm applications we can maintain the employee and employee related payrolls we can run and there are many other activities okay where employees involved with respect to organization process so the all the activities related information we can maintain by using hcm application those hcm applications we maintain with with the logic of enterprise okay so employees information you can maintain in the system with the concept called as enterprise within the enterprise if you want to maintain the employee information we have to use the applications called as hcm application human capital management applications okay that's what you have to understand and registration when you talk about registration if you take example of any organization to run their business say let's take example the client is running the business in us when client is running the business in us to run the business in us they may go with one registration or multiple registrations take example client is running the five different type of businesses since country is the only one they can go with a single registration for multiple businesses or for each business they can go with a separate registration how they want to manage everything how they want to report accordingly company can take the decision but if country is one even if you are doing the multiple businesses one registration is enough or else if you want to maintain all these businesses as a separate entities okay so in that case you may go with a business wise separate registration it's very simple when you are doing the implementation so we have to understand how many registrations they have accordingly how to create the concept called as legal entity in the system to maintain the company registration information we have to create legal entity in the system environment legal entity say l e okay with the legal entity information you can just with the registration information to maintain the registration information we have to create the legal entity in the system so ideally the legal entity information is required to tag with each and every business transaction if you maintain the legal entity registration information if you are going to create purchase invoice you will just map this legal entity with that purchase invoice that purchase invoice you are recording by following which registration so and if you are going to create the sales invoice everything for every business transaction this legal entity we have to map that will see in the system 
so that that would be better understanding for us. But now try to understand to maintain the company registration information, we have to create the legal entity in the system. Legal entity is nothing but company identification. And legal entity level, we have to map the application called as CM or call it as CE. As a part of P2P and O2 cycles, we discussed what does it mean by CE or CM. It's nothing but cash management or you can call it cash entry system. So why we have to map the legal entity at cash management level? So basically in the cash management, we maintain the bank accounts. Bank accounts are owned by which company we have to represent. The company we are representing in the system with the concept called as legal entity. The company identification we are going to maintain with a legal entity. Legal entity is nothing but registration. So say you have a 10 bank accounts. The 10 bank accounts are belongs to which company you have to specify in the system. It's nothing but legal entity only. The company identification, company registration is a legal entity. That is the reason what are the bank accounts we maintain within the cash management application all need to be managed with the legal entity association only. And apart from that legal entity can be used in each and every business transactions for reporting purpose. Okay, so here simple point you have to take as to maintain the registration information in the system. We have to use a legal entity concept. If client has 10 registrations, we have to create 10 legal entities. Client is doing the 10 businesses, but they have only one registration. Yes, we have to create only one legal entity. And business transactions. So you may perform the transactions in the payables department or receivables department or purchasing department or sales department. It could be any department. We discussed for each department, we have a separate application. For each department, we have a separate application. So to maintain that business transactions in the application, okay, we have to create the concept called as business unit in the system environment. Okay, we have to create the business unit. We have to create the business unit. We have to create the BU. So with the concept called as business unit, okay, with the concept called as business unit, you can create the business transactions. On what base we decide the business unit, we'll discuss. Okay, after a few minutes, we are going to discuss about on what base we decide the business unit, how many business units client required, how many legal entities, how many enterprises, other information also we'll discuss. But now just what are the environments we are creating in the system to manage relevant data we are trying to understand. If you want to record any business transaction that could be related to purchasing or sales or invoice or payment or transaction or receipt, anything, any business transaction you want to do in the any business transaction you want to record in the system that you have to record within the specific business unit. Okay. So with the business unit concept only, we record the business transactions. So where we record business transactions as per applications in the sub ledger applications. Okay, already you discussed mostly in the GL we don't record any transaction 99% we don't record the transactions in the general ledger application. All the business transactions we have to record in the sub ledger applications. All the business transactions we have to record in the sub ledger application. When you record the transactions in the any one of the sub ledger application, we have to use the concept called as business unit okay we have to use the concept called as business unit that means to record the transactions in the business unit specific business unit we take the application help called help from the different applications with the help of so any business transaction if you want to record you have to record within the business unit when you are recording the transactions in the business unit the business unit should belongs to source of application okay maybe it could be ap or AR, or PO, or OM. And we have applications like project costing, project billing, so on. So there are many applications which falls under subledger application classification. So in those applications, if you want to record any transactions in AP, AR, PO, OM, project costing, or project billing, or many other applications we have, we require business unit concept. 
without business unit concept you cannot record the business transactions within any one of the application okay so how we decide the business unit and all we are going to discuss anyway the other point is if you want to record the if you want to maintain the stock okay for which what material you have and how much quantities you have if you want to maintain that information and if you want to perform the warehouse related transactions okay so however you are doing the business transactions with the suppliers and customers you can have so warehouse transactions you may move the stock from one place to another place and you may receive the material from the suppliers or you may ship the material to your customer whatever it may be which activities are connected with the warehouse so to manage that information the stock which items you are dealing how much stock you have and uh, what are the warehouse related activities you are doing if you want to track and if you want to maintain in the system we have to use the concept called as inventory organization how to use the concept called as inventory organization okay with the help of inventory organization so you can maintain the stock and you can perform the inventory related transactions okay it could be warehouse related tran warehouse transactions you can say warehouse transactions to manage the warehouse transactions or warehouse related stock we have to use the concept called as inventory organization in the system environment io okay with the concept called as inventory organization you can create the items which items you are dealing and how much quantity is available and what are the activities you are doing within the warehouse all you can handle by using the inventory organization concept okay so inventory organization concept this level you can map the different applications but there are many applications here also primarily you have to understand inv as a part of p2p cycle we discussed p2p and o2c inv inventory application so again the other manufacturing applications also we have bomb bom wip wip okay so there are different applications bomb wip other many other applications also we have we don't need to understand not required for us just since we are uh, going to work on p2p and o2c the basic point here we have to understand inventory with the help of inventory application okay you can manage the warehouse transactions and you can maintain the items and the item related stocks so this is how we have to do the mapping in the system environment okay so employees information we can maintain with the concept called as enterprise by using its cm application the registration information we can maintain in the system with the legal entity concept okay what are the bank accounts we are going to create in the cash management those need to be connected with the legal entity to address who is the owner for those bank accounts when you say so and so legal entity is owner it's nothing but so and so entity the registered entity to record the business transaction the system we use the concept called as business unit with the help of business unit we can record the transaction in all these applications to maintain the warehouse transactions and the stock we use inventory organization concept with the help of inventory application we can record the warehouse transactions with the inventory organization concept so this is a primary very primary classification for the data employee data you have to maintain separately with the enterprise concept registration data you have to track with the concept called as a legal entity business transactions data you have to create and to track within the system with the business unit concept warehouse related transaction data we have to capture with the inventory organization concept for this all areas these are the different applications which we use to track separately as per the business requirement okay so we'll i'll take you through few more slides after completing those discussions if you have any questions we'll discuss on the same yep the same i given here i just prepared simple document to understand the same yeah please uh lakshman is it possible to have uh, more than uh, one enterprise in an instance we will discuss those we'll discuss i'll, I'll cover everything by end of the session you will just get to know what are the questions okay. you have now everything will be cleared so anything is pending you can raise that we'll discuss because see here we have to understand 
just i given what base you decide how many enterprises required how many legal entities required how many business units are required as per business those all will discuss yeah we are going to discuss how many we have to create on what base we have to decide what are the different possibilities this all will we are going to discuss we'll see that okay the same information i take in here for employee data okay so this is the primary classification for business data employees data where just we maintain the employee records there we run the payrolls transaction related employees the registration data okay the company registration records for tax reporting business transactions data to record the purchase orders invoices payment sales orders billing receipts warehouse or inventory data stock inventory transactions so that's how this is how primarily we can classify the data as employees data registration data business transaction data and warehouse or inventory data this is how we have to classify once you do this classification if you want to maintain the data as per this classifications okay we have to create relevant virtual environments in the system to maintain the employees data we have to create the enterprise with the concept called as enterprise we can maintain the employees data with the registration to maintain the registration data we have to create the legal entity in the system environment with the concept called as legal entity you can maintain the company registration data and the same you can use for legal reporting also to record the business transaction we need business unit in the system environment to maintain the warehouse data we need inventory organization in the system environment okay so this is what we have to understand now if you are going to record the transactions it may be employee related transactions those may be legal related transactions or those may be enterprise uh, business unit related transactions core business transactions okay the most of the business transactions can be recorded within the business unit only so it may be the transactions may be related to enterprise transactions that means employee related transaction legal related reporting or whatever you call and business unit the business transactions across all these applications or inventory related transactions any business transactions we want to record we need primary ledger that's what we discussed in the previous session to record the transactions any level you need primary ledger with the help of primary ledger only you can record the business transactions okay you have to use the concept class again we don't need to write by using the primary ledger only you can record the transactions related to employees or registration or business transactions or warehouse now when we are going to maintain this data in the system environment okay enterprise legal entity business unit inventory organization or i will say is certain hierarchy you have to follow okay certain hierarchy you have to follow this information you have to maintain by following certain structure So all the data need to be managed in the system environment by following certain structure. So that if you are going to arrange this data, enterprises, legal entities, business units, inventory organization, your primary ledger, everything. If you are going to set up in the system, okay, that complete information related to enterprise, okay, on organization related data only. This this is all about right. so employees data illegal registration data business transactions warehouse related data this everything related to the organization so since we are going to manage the entire organization related data by following such a structured manner so this complete information if you are going to maintain the system that you can call as enterprise structure okay if you are going to maintain this complete information in the system environment that complete data we call as enterprise structure that means uh, one enterprise related one organization related data we are going to structure as a separate i mean it, two points one is segregation other one is structure some hierarchy we are going to maintain so employees data separately registration data separately business unit data separately warehouse data separately and again by following certain structure okay what data will be standing at very high level under that data what data we have to maintain everything need to be managed in the system very structured manner which is related to enterprise so when we are going to maintain the enterprise data in the system environment what structure 
we can follow in case of Oracle Fusion applications that Oracle is providing. We'll go and see what structure we have to follow if you are going to maintain the data related to any enterprise. Okay, this is the structure we have to follow. The enterprise structure in the Fusion applications. Okay, the enterprise structure in the Fusion applications. If you are going to maintain any organization data in the Fusion applications, this is the structure we have to follow. On top level, we should maintain the enterprise where we can maintain the employees data. We not discussed about division. We'll talk about it. Okay, it's not uh, primary and not mandatory, not compulsory as per the business. But we'll talk why Oracle given where we can use and we'll go with some examples. So whatever we discussed so far, let's look into that. On top level, we have to maintain the enterprise where we can maintain the employees information. And under enterprise, we, we have to maintain the division concept. What is the division, how on what base we can take the division, we'll discuss maybe after a few minutes. But now just try to understand how that structure you can uh, establish in the system environment. Top level enterprise, under enterprise, you can have a division. Under division, so you can have a primary ledger concept. To record the business transactions, we require primary ledger for that reason, the primary ledger also part of enterprise structure. Under primary ledger, we can have a legal entity. I already discussed what does it mean by legal entity. The company registration information you can maintain as a legal entity. Under legal entities, you can have a business unit where you can record the core, or the real business transactions which takes place in the business across the departments. And to maintain the warehouse information in the system environment, we use the concept called as inventory organization, IO. So this is standard enterprise structure which Oracle is offering when you do the implementation, the fusion application for any client. Every client should follow this hierarchy. You no need to go and arrange this. If you are going to create all these in the system, automatically the system will establish this sort of enterprise in the system environment. But we have to understand the same how it works and what is the meaning of these enterprise components. This is all you can call as enterprise components, okay, or enterprise elements or enterprise units. Okay, what are the different units we have in the enterprise? Enterprise, division, primary ledger, legal entity, business unit, and inventory organization. Okay, inventory organization. So when you talk about division, okay, so division is not a mandatory definition as a part of enterprise. If you are doing the implementation for any client, so division is not mandatory, not required. But enterprise, primary ledger, legal entity, business unit, and inventory organization also mandatory. These all are mandatory. Sometimes in the business, you could say, if the client is into services, client, client is dealing, the organization is dealing with the services, for service-oriented organizations, they may not require warehouse, right? If they are dealing with some product, yes, they need inventory organization. If they are into manufacturing to maintain the raw material and all, they need inventory organization. If the organization into services, say organization into consulting services. If they are dealing with the consulting services, they no need to store anything within the warehouse. In that case, inventory organization is not required. But as per system, inventory organization is compulsory. If reality if client is not going to have a real warehouse, okay, but still for system point of view, you have to create it. Okay, you have to create it. In the system environment, we have to create. You can see that when you are dealing with inventory organization, that point also will focus how to manage all those points. So this is standard enterprise structure. This is standard enterprise structure as per Oracle Fusion application, if you are going to implement the, if you are going to implement Fusion application for any client, the client may be in one country or multiple countries, this hierarchy system follows based on the setups what we do. Okay, division is optional, but where we can use the division concepts, let's look into that. Here I have a slide which talks about division and everything. Here I take a simple example. Client is doing their business in US and client is doing two different type of businesses, two vertical of businesses. What businesses client is doing? Consulting business and electronics business. Now the type of businesses, the vertical of businesses you can take as a divisions. The enterprise is ERP3 enterprise. 
the client is doing the business in one country since client is doing business in one country i take and one primary ledger for one country one primary ledger is required and since client is doing the two different businesses they can go with the two different divisions okay one is consulting division other one is electronic division when they are doing the business as a two separate division two vertical of businesses what is the verticals here type of businesses two different business consulting is one vertical electronics one vertical so i take in the example for each type of business they have a separate registration so in that case we have to maintain the separate legal entity for each registration we have to go with a separate legal entity i take an example here for two businesses consulting businesses one registration so er petri consulting legal entity for electronics business separate registration er petri electronics legal entity so two registrations so under this consulting legal entity with this registration client is run operating the business in two locations one is new york other one is dallas so for new york business one business unit because in the new york what are the business operations they are doing they have to track separately they have to produce the report separately okay in the new york what are the business activities they are doing those could be purchases or sales payments receipts etc etc they have to maintain separately how much they are spending how much revenue they are generating other business activities they have to maintain separately in the same way say client is running the client has one branch in the dallas also to run their business operations for that we have to go with a separate business unit to support those business units they may have a inventories okay since is a consulting i take as a stores inventory they may maintain just some store store okay it may not be real warehouse stores inventory i take since they are into consulting okay consulting registration consulting legal entity they are doing they have a consulting services in these two locations so each location i am taking as a business unit and uh, if required they have to maintain the stores inventory otherwise there may not be inventory for those businesses in that case at least we have to create the dummy warehouse dummy inventory as per system and i take another case as electronics legal entity that means for the electronics business they have a separate registration so for this business they have a two branches which they are operating okay austin and los angeles and for austin business unit what are the transactions they are doing in the austin location what are the business they are doing everything they have to capture separately that is the reason we are taking austin business operations as a separate business unit so in the austin business they are into computer sales i take in the inventory as a computer inventory so in the same way los angeles say they are dealing with the computers and mobiles and they have a two warehouses that means two inventory organizations we have to create in the system so this is how we have to create the structure if you take simple example client is operating the business in us and they are into two vertical of businesses and they have want to maintain those two verticals as a two different divisions and if they have a two separate registration for each division or each vertical of businesses accordingly how to create the two legal entities under which registration in which locations you are operating the business accordingly how to create the business units the same i take in here reality how many warehouses they have in the business the same we have to represent as a separate inventory organizations so this is how we have to create the enterprise structure if you take the simple example if client is running the business in one country two type of businesses in four locations with the respective legal and uh, inventory organizations okay and just give me few more minutes i'll take you through few more slides i'll take all your consolidated questions and i take in here different example i take an example client is running the business in four countries client is running the business in four countries the countries are india singapore france and uk this four countries client is running the business so the client is only one that is the reason enterprise is only one and if they want to go with the concept called as divisions so four countries they can take this india and singapore falls under apac division okay they are taking the division region wise the earlier example we taken the division concept they are taking based on the vertical of business here they are taking the division concept based on the region so apac region india and singapore falls under apac 
and EMEA division just France and UK falls under EMEA. So that's how they can just segregate the overall business operations which they are doing across the countries with the division concept. And since they are running the business in four countries, for each country, one primary ledger is required. For India, India primary ledger. For Singapore, Singapore primary ledger. For France, France primary ledger. For UK, UK primary ledger. So when they are running the business in specific country, they, they should go with the registration. So for India to run the business, they have a registration. So we created India legal entity. LE means legal entity. For Singapore, one registration, one legal entity. For France, one registration, one legal entity. For UK, one registration, one legal entity. So in India, they are operating the business in two locations. Ideally, in how many locations they are operating the business, we create the business units. Say so they are operating in India in two locations. One is Delhi and the other one is Hyderabad. So Delhi business unit and Hyderabad business unit. In the Delhi business unit, in the Delhi branch, they are dealing with the computer. So they have a computer's inventory. In Hyderabad business unit, they are dealing with the mobile sales or mobile related activities, whatever. So mobile related inventory. In the Singapore, they have a separate operations in this woodlands location. So they have a separate BU in this city and they are dealing with the mobiles and the Paris. They are dealing with the car related sales and in the London. So no inventory because so in the London, they are dealing with the services. Okay. They are dealing with the services. And uh, in, in case of services, no invent. And uh, our BU, they are dealing with the bike sales, etc. So bikes inventory. This is how you have to create the enterprise structure as per the business. This is a simple case. Client is operating the business in four countries. And in each country, they have a separate registration. And uh, in each country, they are doing the business in the respective locations. In India, two locations, Singapore one, France one, and UK in two locations. So by taking this case, this is how we have to design the enterprise structure for the respective clients. And based on the, since they are doing the business in the multiple countries, if they want to go with the concept called as division, based on the regions, they can take the division. Now another previous example we take and divisions based on everything they are doing in single country only but they want to segregate with the total business operations based on the the divisions okay that means this two countries two business units data would be reported as a consulting division this two business units data would be reported as electronics division that's all but division is not compulsory by using the division Frankly speaking, there is no great advantage. Okay. So with a division just to represent the organization hierarchy, but you cannot perform any business transactions by selecting the division. So most of the businesses, when you do the implementation, we don't use the concept called as division. What are the implementations you could see in the market also? If you look into their uh, enterprise structure, you don't find the division because there is no much uh, value addition with the division concept. So in the older versions with Oracle only, it could be EBS 11i, EBS R12. In those versions, there is no division concept, but, but fusion only they introduced, but there is no great value with the division. Still, if somebody want to take the division as a hierarchy in the enterprise structure, they can take it. If you see the same case without division, this is how it looks like. Generally, this is how we design the solution. Okay, if client is operating the business in four countries, so only one enterprise because only one client. For one business, one client, only one enterprise. We cannot have more than one also. So since client is one, enterprise also would be one. It may be one country or multiple countries. How many countries they are running the business? Four countries, four primary ledgers. For each country, they say they have one registration. They can have more than one registration also. Accordingly, we have to create the legal entities. So here we are taken four countries, four registrations. In each country, in how many locations they are operating the business? Those many business units you taken to support those business unit operations. How many warehouses we have? Accordingly, we have to use the operating unit uh, inventory organizations. Okay. Now let's look into a few points. The points are. How many enterprises, how many legal entities, how many primary ledgers or else you take from here. Okay, 
So as per this hierarchy, you can take the complete information, complete information to spreadsheet. So that we'll go and discuss. Okay, top level we have enterprise. Under enterprise, we have a division. Under division, we have a primary ledger. Under primary ledger, we have a legal entry under legal entry. The business unit under business unit inventory automation. We'll, we'll take the same information to spreadsheet and we'll discuss. So what are the possibilities and what base we have to decide how many client required and what are the other key points we have to understand. Okay. So when we talk about enterprise structure. So we talk about enterprise structure on top level we can have an enterprise. Under enterprise, we can have divisions. Under divisions, you can have primary ledger. Under primary ledger, you can have legal entity. Under legal entity, you can have business unit. Under business unit, you can have inventory organization. Take the short names also. So IO. We call it as BU. Legal entity, the short name is LE. The primary ledger, short name is PL. Division, as this we have to call. Okay. So this is the enterprise structure. If we are going to do the implementation for any client, the client may do business in one country or multiple countries, doesn't matter. We can have only one enterprise. Only one enterprise. Okay. So if you are going to do implementation for any company, we can have only one enterprise. And here one more point, the guys who are from the EBS background, the guys who are from EBS background, for them, we'll, we'll go with the separate discussion after completing this. I'll compare the same with the EBS, how we manage in EBS, how the same we have in Fusion, the comparison, okay, the similarity and all those points we'll discuss later. For now, you just try to understand these points as a standalone. Don't compare with EBS. Yes, that also will do after some time. Okay, enterprise. Since only one client, one business, we can have only one enterprise. That means in the Oracle Fusion instance, you can create only one enterprise. Why we can create only one enterprise? Oracle provides one instance for only one client. Oracle is not going to provide one instance for multiple clients. If they are giving one instance for multiple clients, yes, you can create for each client separate enterprise in the same instance. But Oracle is providing one instance to one client only. That is the reason we can create one enterprise. When you talk about enterprise, what we discussed. As a part of enterprise, we can maintain the employee's information. Say for example, you have, you are going to do the implementation for 10 countries for our client. The 10 countries businesses belongs to only one group of company or only one organization. So locations are 10, 10 countries. But if you are going to create only one enterprise, what about country specific employees information? Yes, as a part of HCM applications, you can maintain the country specific employees information with the concept called as LDZ. Okay, we have a concept called as the fusion applications as a part of HCM. By using the HCM applications only, we can maintain the employee's information. That too, you can maintain at what level? Enterprise level. With the enterprise concept only, you can maintain the employee's information with the HCM applications. If you are going to do the implementation for 10 countries, how to segregate 10 countries' employee's information within the enterprise? We have a concept called as LDZ, legislative data group. We can group the employee's information country specific. Okay, data grouping. Legislative data group, nothing but employee related information we can maintain legislated data groups country specific so that you can manage the employees information you can run the employee related payrolls country specific we are not going to mix 10 countries employees information to same enterprise without any logic 
okay we have a logic called as ldz within the enterprise which supports to maintain country specific employees information so that's how in the enterprise structure if you are going to, if you are going to do the implementation for any client we can create only one enterprise even that could be one country implementation or multiple countries implementation but we are using the concept called as ldz legislative data group you can maintain the country specific employees information that's what you have to understand okay so that's all about enterprise and when i talk about division okay i'll just complete these points then we can proceed with the questions okay i'll complete these points i will go proceed with the question okay that's all about enterprise we can create only one enterprise in one instance but country specific information can be managed with the concept called as legislative data group and when i talk about division okay just now we take in the example on what base you can decide how many divisions so they can maintain the divisions based on the regions or maybe based on the vertical of businesses or else they can go with the other segregation also how they want to so categorize the business operations business information they can create the division concept okay it completely depends we cannot say these many exactly we have to create so that's all about division and primary ledger okay so one per country okay for each country we have to create the separate primary ledger okay for each country if you are doing the implementation for 10 countries 10 primary ledgers are required why we have to create 10 primary ledgers why we cannot use the same primary ledger for 10 country when you create the primary ledger within the primary ledger we have to select the currency for every country currency is different right so the very primary difference is currency in for every country so since we are going to do the implementation for 10 countries for each country we have to select separate currency that is the reason for each country you have to create the separate primary ledger and uh, other point is country wise also you can have a separate chart of accounts i'll take simple example say <coughs> The client is operating the business in India. Okay, client is operating the business in India. When client is operating the business in India, say they are into consulting services and automobiles, automobiles industry. The enterprise is only one. Okay, client is into these two different businesses. So in that case, as per the consulting business, they need seven segments as per automobiles business they need nine segments when they need seven segments and nine segments and two may be common company and account remaining may be totally different if the client wants to go with a separate segments okay for business in that case we may create separate chart of accounts for consulting the chart of accounts one and automobiles consult consulting this chart of accounts two consulting one chart of account automobiles separate chart of accounts so in this case since we have a two chart of accounts for india business for these two type of businesses two chart of accounts you cannot take into one primary ledger that is the reason for each primary ledger you have to use the sorry each chart of accounts you have to go with the separate primary ledger in that case even country is one only one since two businesses has a separate chart of accounts requirement you can go with a separate primary ledgers in one country you can have two primary ledgers and more than also that completely depends on business requirement but reality we never suggest any client to go with a separate chart of account, separate uh, primary ledgers based on the, the businesses ideally even two countries two businesses we suggest only one chart of account and even the client is operating the business in multiple countries also for all the countries we use the same chart of accounts that we call as global chart of accounts okay so generally for one country we require one primary ledger why we have to create a uh, primary ledger separately for each and every country we, we have to maintain the separate currencies based on the country the legal entities based on the number of registrations okay based on the registration count okay based on number of 
registrations they have accordingly how to create the legal entities and when you talk about business unit the business units there are many cases how you can finalize the business unit ideally based on the location okay ideally based on the location base you can do the decide the business unit i'll take the simple example client is operating the business in four countries okay four countries sorry four locations say it could be one country us and four locations client is operating the business in that case we go with the four business units four locations means we take four business units that is a one case four locations four business units another point is client is operating the business in only one location here i am taking client is doing only one business say consulting business client is doing okay answer that point client is doing only consulting business so four location four businesses so client is doing the business in only one location let me take that point also here client is doing business in four locations what business consulting business that now client is doing the business in only one location and in the one location which business they have they are dealing with this two consulting and automobiles so in that case even location is one for consulting one business unit and automobiles one business unit you have to create location is one but how many businesses two businesses so say client is doing the business in the dallas location now we have to create the two business units one is consulting dallas business unit automobiles dallas business unit so this is how we have to create or else client is doing the business in only one location their business also only one one location only one location okay only one business that is a consulting business okay in that case just will create with that location only one business unit maybe this is only one business okay this is how we create so ideally it's a based on location but within the same location if you are operating the multiple businesses those we can take as a multiple So, if you take example of reality, take example Walmart. If you are going to implement fusion applications for Walmart, how many business units you have to create? It's very simple. How many stores they have within the US? Those many business units you have to create. Say they have 50 stores in the US. Then simply in the system you have to create 50 business units in the system. Why we have to create 50 business units when they have 50 stores? Because the store wise they have to maintain the business transactions how much they are spending how much they are how much purchases they are doing or what are the sales they are doing how much profit they are generating and branch wise only the store wise only they have to produce the reports so what level they want to maintain the data separately they want to produce the reports that level they can create the concept use the concept called as business unit with the business unit concept what you can do is we can segregate and maintain the data separately and even you can secure the data as per system and you can produce the reports based on that business unit segregation okay if you are doing the business in multiple locations if you are going to use the single business unit for multiple locations business if you record each and every transaction with the same business unit name you cannot track that information okay you cannot track that information so that is a point we have to understand and based on the business units only you can decide how many companies you require into your chart of accounts that's very important point so how many companies you require in the chart of account that always depends on business units so as per your business you are operating the business in four locations so four business units the four business units only will take as a four companies into your chart of accounts so that mapping we have to do 
the number of business units should be equal to the number of companies okay the companies reality those are not companies those are branches as per those are company related branches that is the reason we take the business units as a companies the number of branch business units should be equal to number of the companies that means the business units we have to take into the chart of accounts as a number of companies if you have a 20 business units the chart of accounts you have to create with the same name 10 20 companies okay 20 companies this is a point we have to understand okay sometimes okay sometimes here you may not take the segment called as company okay you may not take the segment called as company you may not take the segment called as company i'll take simple example here okay we take simple example okay so the point is how many business units you have those many companies you have to maintain within the chart of accounts sometimes what happens is take example the client has business in one country say that is usa and what businesses they are doing consulting and automobiles when they are doing the consulting and automobiles business say they are doing in only one location take example okay only one location if it is a one location so consulting and automobiles we create two business units but say for these two businesses they have a two separate registrations okay so consulting legal entity and automobiles legal entity automobiles legal entity so client is operating the business in only one location and they have these two businesses for each business they have a separate registration in this case for consulting you have to create one legal entity for automobiles you have to create one legal entity for the same you have to create those two only for this two only you have to maintain the two companies so instead of taking the company in this scenario you can take segment as a legal entity also okay with this registration what business you are doing okay that you can take and with automobiles what business you are doing the same you can take even business unit names also you can take the same this could be your business unit names directly with legal entity you can take because your legal entity and business unit and company everything is same so with this legal entity in the so and so dollars location what are the business you are doing separately you can track here the number of legal entities and number of business units are same that is the reason you can take company as a instead of company you can take the segment called as legal entity or else you can take here company in which scenario say you have two legal entities and you are operating the business in three locations three locations you have this business in that case we'll have a total six business units right for each business one business unit since two businesses total six bus you can have now your legal entities are only two registrations are two and business units are six in this case you can have a segment if you want to have a segment you can have a legal entity as a one segment other one is company in this case how many legal entities we have these two legal entities these two you will take as a legal entities how many companies you have nothing but your business unit six business units you will take as a six companies but ideally legal entities you no need to take as a part of chart of accounts whenever you are recording the transaction with this business unit for each business unit we have to map the legal entity that's how system can understand for each legal entity what are the business transactions are recorded across the business unit that is possible in the system by default we no need to do the mapping but sometimes if client required if they want to have a legal entity as a segment even they have a company yes they can do that but they have to choose what level they have want to balance and generate the reports primarily primarily okay ideally the best practice is company based on the branches we create the legal entities so that level only they have to choose if they are choosing company as a primary 
uh, tracking of the information the legal entity is not required automatically system can capture the legal entity for each and every business unit but still if some client required we can use the legal entity as a one of the segment otherwise you have a two registrations you have a two branches for each branch, uh, registration separate uh, location you are running the business in that case two registrations we have two business units we have even if you take the segment as a legal entity instead of company yes that would work there is no big difference okay so these are the few points we have to understand related to how to decide how many enterprise units are required how many enterprises you require only one divisions depending on the scenario but it's completely optional remaining all are compulsory you have to create this is completely optional and primary ledger one per one country you can create more than one generally we don't go with that practices and which makes difference to create more than one primary ledger in one country if different businesses require different chart of accounts for business wise we may create separate chart of account chart of account wise we have to create the lay primary ledgers also so ideally in reality we don't go with that approach just for our understanding the example i am taking that case and legal entities number of registrations how many registrations they have based on the number of registrations how many they have accordingly we have to create legal entity business units ideally based on the location or say branches how many branches they have how many outlets they have stores they have a, or units they have to run the business operations so accordingly you have to create the business unit and again we have to consider the type of businesses also what they are doing the location plus business plus location okay that's how that combination you have to create the business unit inventory organizations how many warehouses they have those many inventory organizations okay based on number of warehouses how many warehouses reality they have in the business those many inventory organizations we have to create there is one more point which you have to understand related to warehouse we have to create one virtual warehouse also in the system but as a part of p2p cycle i'll touch that point for now take simple point as per real business how many warehouses they have those many inventory organizations we have to create in the system okay now you can go ahead with your questions if you have anything related to this slide which i presented or else the points whatever we discussed here any questions from anyone please hey uh, lakshman uh, one question so you mentioned that you know we can have a primary ledger like uh, in your example four primary ledgers for four different countries yes uh, yeah I, I, so how do we uh, like uh, and if we want to have a consolidated uh, financial reporting at the enterprise level then how do we do that okay you have to create one more ledger called as consolidation ledger okay after creating the consolidation ledger you can pull the data from these four ledgers to that ledger that's how you can create the consolidation reports we are going to cover that concept in our course okay okay all right all right just one one more question on the same ground so if we have like you said it is not recommended but if we have different chart of uh, account structures for two different ledgers is there any challenge for consolidation or can it be done yeah if you have a chart of accounts different see you are saying like uh, you are taking the two countries different chart of accounts right yes yes so even if you have a separate there won't be an issue but you have to do the mapping if chart of accounts are different you have to do the mapping if single chart of accounts it's the same right it would be easy in terms of uh, merging the data it won't become a big challenge but as a best practice companies will use a single chart of accounts for multiple countries so everything they can control that level that's how it would be very easy okay okay all right yeah thank you yeah thanks any other questions please hey lakshman uh, you mentioned that uh, bu you, you will make as the location wise so say for example if one business is having 10 branches in one city so will you go with 10 business units exactly exactly okay because you you have definitely the business will have a requirement of managing the business data separately right say they have a like uh, city is dallas 
they have a five outlets for walmart those are completely separate of business operations okay each store will be maintained independently i mean like the business sales whatever they procure for that and what are the expense they spend what are the revenue they generate definitely business will have a requirement which outlet is doing well right everything they have to produce the reports for that flexibility you have to make those as a separate business unit take example reliance fresh if you take hyderabad say they have 50 branches 60 outlets if they go with the fusion implementation we have to create 50 business units in the system that's how we deal yeah. any other questions please now these outlets can be treat as a profit center example like you know rather than creating 50 business units can we bring them in the value segment and can we have a like a, a, a extra a, a value segment and treat this as a like a profit center so so rather than creating 50 bu we create only one uh, like a one company and under one company we have a 50 profit center within the value segments yeah we are doing that we are doing that see six branches i'll create as a six companies okay you may use as a profit center or uh, some other purposes but whatever it may be you have to bring into the system if you don't take the six into uh, under company you cannot do the setups for six and you cannot perform the transaction for those six some companies what they do is okay but that is not a best practice okay 99% whatever we are discussing we can do that only okay so here say they are operating the business so take this case only in us in one location they are doing the business i think here we have location is only one location is only one palace and two businesses two businesses one is consulting other one is automobiles okay two businesses now ideally they have to go with the two business units 99% clients go with this approach that's what we have to suggest as a best recommend some clients they say since location is one i want to go with only one business unit yes they can go with one business unit we can name it as dollars us dollars business unit okay simply dollars business unit so when they go with dollars business unit when you do the setups for dollars business unit for payables or receivables any other applications here you will have you should maintain the values for this consulting and automobiles for consulting you are giving a 1000 value and automobiles you are giving 2000 value identification purpose so when you create dallas business unit when you create the transaction related to consulting you have to record the transaction with the 1000 if you with the dallas business unit if you create the transaction related to automobiles you have to select 2000 yes you can select only you are creating one business unit with that one business unit you want to record the transactions related to this consulting and automobiles but what happens is when you do the setups for this dallas business unit when you do the setups you can select only one one value only 1000 or 2000 i am selecting 1000 when i create the transaction in the dollars with the 1000 consulting related transaction things will get automated but when you are dealing with a automobiles auto you can set for one business unit only one value you can set okay one company mapping only you can do if you set 1000 if you are recording the transaction the 2000 automatically data cannot be system won't take in the business transaction there are certain transaction again inter company and all there it will be challenge that is reason even there is a possibility based on the scenarios there will be complexity that is the reason as a best practice always what we do is 
how many businesses or how many locations they are operating for each we have to create separate if you create separate business units for dollars consulting you can set 1000 dollars automobiles you can set 2000 when we are going to handle the transactions for respect to the 1000 2000 the everything will get automated it could be accounting or transaction process related controls or defaults everything we can set how the business how the activities they are taking place in the respect to business or location that's how we have to set so this information the business units information already you are taking as a companies already you are taking as a companies again you need to take with the separate term called as profit center if you want to generate the profitability and all based on this company values only you can create you have 10 business units then you are taking as a 10 companies then that level you can generate any sort of reports separate for the purpose of different purpose you no need to create again the same in the chart of accounts with a different segment name not at all required but ideally we manage everything all the transactions everything we get balanced ideally at one level only okay so if you take the company that is a best practice you can balance each and every transaction that level you can produce the reports on top of it these levels also will be able to track the business information but every transaction need to be balanced at company level as a debit and credit so th this is a what we have to understand related to that again one more segment you don't need to create for the same values same information no, so so the basically the reports are based on the value segment not based on the enterprise structure isn't it am i right or wrong based on the what you said reports are based on reports based on the value segment not based on the enterprise Structure. Exactly. Exactly. My example. So the values okay. you are going to have under company segment based on those values you can uh, record the report. and you can track. And if you want to see the total consolidated information, yes, you can uh, select the range of the companies. That's how it will represent the information. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So on the values only. So, but uh, for the purpose of the consolidation, we can consolidate uh, uh, based on the enterprise structure also, no? If you have if you have complete data in one ledger, by default it would be consolidated. If you have a data in the multiple ledger, you are running the business in four countries. The four countries data will be maintained separately. If you want to consolidate the four ledgers data, you want to bring into separate ledger called as consolidation ledger. But you have a ten companies, but ten companies you have in the same primary ledger. So by default data would be available as a consolidated. Just you have to run the report. You can see you don't need to do any additional activity. So then like how do we eliminate the intercompany transaction? That is separate concept. When you are doing the consolidation, we do the elimination. Okay. okay. Intercompany we don't include in the consolidation. Yes, that we have to do that. That is a concept to specific. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions here, please? So if you have uh, my, just to summarize based on the discussion what we are having. So if we have multiple business units, then it's always advisable to have that business unit also as a segment in the chart of accounts as company. So that the chart of accounts segment. Here, one second, one second yes. before you proceed yeah. with the mm -hmm. statement. This you can name it as business unit also. Many clients do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, ideally we just company related information we call it as a company or else if you want to use the same term in the instead of using as a company segment you can name it as business unit that's all anything you can do you can take as a company or you can take as a business unit or some some clients what they do is reality those are the branches instead of taking this name as a business unit or company you can take as a operational branch okay that's all the naming convention you can map how you require. Yeah, please go ahead. Any questions, please? Any questions from anyone on this today discussion? It's all about enterprise we are trying to understand. Okay, so along with this enterprise, when you talk about chart of accounts, we'll just 
to take you through few points which we have to be very sure when you are going to design the chart of accounts. So if you are going to design the chart of accounts for any company, okay, what are the key points we have to consider? I think we discussed a few, but if anything is missing, once again, we'll go with that. Okay. So out of all these segments, whatever you are going to use, you have to maintain one balancing segment. Okay, when you are creating the chart of accounts, only one balancing segment. Only one balancing segment means out of all the segments, one segment you want, you have to choose as a primary what level everything need to be controlled and balanced and reported. Ideally, we use the company. Okay. System will allow you to use more than one as a balancing, but that will create many challenges in terms of business transactions and all. So as a best practice, we have to suggest the client to use only one balancing segment. That means what segment level transactions need to be balanced. Ideally, the one balancing segment always we take a company. Company segment we make as a balance. Or else you can name it as a segment name as legal entity and branch or business unit, anything. So what level you want to control and balance each and every transaction you want to produce the reports, that segment you have to make as a balancing segment. How to make the segment as a balancing that we'll see in the system in graph. Here as a point you can take. Okay. And we have to try to manage all the, you will maintain the companies, departments, right here we discussed, all the companies we maintain, all the departments we maintain, all the accounts, projects, etc. For all these values, what you are going to maintain as whatever the possibility you have, if required, instead of saying if required, ideally we have to maintain the values with the parent and child hierarchy so that in the reporting it would become very easy. Okay. Another point what you have to consider is when you are going to maintain the values within the chart of accounts for your companies, departments, accounts, so maintain parent and parent relationship. Okay. So parent and child relationship. So that this will help a lot in the reporting point of Okay, so if you want to prepare any reports, instead of selecting all the companies one by one, if you have a parent company for all the companies, say you have 10 companies and if you create one parent company, 10 companies will be under parent. If you want to know 10 companies owns account balances, simply if you select parent account, immediately it will fetch the information. If you don't have a parent, all if you are going to maintain as a 10 as a child companies, all you have to check one by one or you have to select the range and that will become big task. The best practice is you can maintain parent and child relation that we'll see in our classes how to maintain all the values with a parent and a child. We'll create everything through manual process and we'll load all the information through one concept called as rapid implementation approach. So there I'll take you through how you can maintain all the data with a parent and child hierarchy. Okay. And uh, we should suggest to the client at least one or two future segments also. Okay, future segments. Okay, minimum one, or as a uh, like uh, we can suggest two also. But we we should bring this point into discussion as a suggestion to the client to maintain as a future segment in the future. If client required any new segment, this can be used as per their requirement. And other important point is already discussed. Okay, the number of business units. Okay, the number of business units should, should be same as number of companies. As per system, we call as balancing segments. Okay, for now we'll take as a companies. The number of business unit should be same as, same as number of companies number of companies means the company segment whatever the uh, values will take those we call as companies ideally company what are the values we maintain those we call as 
balance in segment values. The meaning is how many business units you have, those many asked is if you have 10 balance in segment, 10 company business units, then you have to create as a 10 company center company segment. Why we are using the term called as balance in segment values, we'll understand. Okay, when you are working on system, you'll understand this point. And another important point is, okay, uh, you can say, uh, I mean, uh, sub-ledger applications. What are the information, what are the data you are taking into chart of accounts that should not be specific to sub-ledger application, okay? Say, don't create segment in chart of accounts for the data or say chart of account to capture Subledger application data. Okay, don't create segment in the chart of account to capture subledger application data. That means when you are creating the chart of accounts, the chart of account we have to create, which can be used across the applications. That should not we, can, we should not create the chart of account to capture specific application data. That means if you are creating the chart of accounts, you should not take the segment called as a supplier or customer which are specific to the application okay if you take the segments like company in every application you can use it department in every application account in every application projects wherever it is applicable this is how you have to create you should not take segments into chart of accounts by targeting one specific subledger application data capturing requirements okay so these are the points we have to notice okay and we should it's a very important one more point. Okay, it should be based on your reporting requirements, company reporting requirements. The overall chart of accounts as per reporting requirements. When it comes to reporting against which data they want to report, those elements you have to take as a segments into chart of accounts. Okay, those elements you should take as a chart of accounts. And I'll give you one more point, okay, one more point that you don't try to understand now that will be, that you can understand when you are working on GL application, but as a point, you just let me address here. So, seventh point, we should use cross validation rules. CVR. Okay. So we should use a cross validation rule when dynamic inserts dynamic inserts are enabled. This concept, this point will understand when you are working on GL. Okay, for now, please don't consider this point, but make a note. So this is what we have to follow as a best practice when you are designing the chart of accounts. Only one balance in segment. Okay, that means out of all the segments what we maintain within the chart of account, one you have to take as a primary. How you can make one segment as a primary that we'll see in the system. And manage all the values as a parent and child relation. If you are going to maintain all the accounts, between the accounts you maintain the parent and child relation. How that can be done, we'll see in the system. And suggest to the client to go with one or two future segments. And how many business units you have with the same number you have to create the companies. That is the best practice. Don't create the segments in the chart of accounts to capture specific application data. That means application specific element don't take as a segment into chart of accounts. And it should be the chart of account what we are designing that should support their reporting requirements. And we should create 
we we should create cross validation rules when we use the dynamic inserts or enable that is separate concept but you should consider when you are designing the chart of accounts so these are the points we have to understand okay so any questions from anyone please see one more point here let me just give a note when you are discussing something the most of the points you can understand when we discuss but there will be certain points which you cannot understand now which would be very clear for you after some time when you deal with the relevant concept only so similar to that this is a point and this is a point primary balance segment etc these will understand very soon but what are the points we are discussing now it would be clear immediately few and few will be in the mid of the course but few by end of the course everything would be very much clear for us so that is that is a point you have to take a note if you don't get something you can ask me or else still uh, there is still uh, the, some clarity is required if that may be concept dependency and all we'll we'll discuss if you have any questions please any questions from anyone on these points please If no questions, we can wind up for today. If you have any questions, please. Hi, Lakshman. Please. Hi, um, Lakshman. I was um, uh, I was in your previous class. I've emailed you several times, and I've not gotten any reply from you. What you said? Previous class? Yes, I said I've emailed you a couple of times. You know. About getting access back into the into this for for future instance and what we what we discussed in the previous can you, class. Can you reply? Can you just send me an email now? I'll I'll share immediately on this email. Just you send me once I just finish this class. I'll I'll just uh, revert back to. You need instance, right? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Exactly. You know. I'll do that. I'll do that. Just please uh, reply on this mail. Send a test mail on this. I'll just. Never do that immediately. Yep. Okay. Any other questions from anyone, please? Any questions, please? Uh, uh one question uh so uh, you know you mentioned that the uh, we can create the reports based on each business unit now i'm talking about the gl financial statements like uh, trial balance uh, pnl so at yeah. what level one second one second yeah, I, I got one second the business unit data only will come to gl to prepare the reports that is the first part okay so if you have 10 business units for each business units will take one value the, the 10 only will come to gl in that uh, in the general ledger application you can prepare the reports based on those values that means each value represents each code for each business unit we use one code maybe 10 20 30 40 okay so when you create the transaction in the sub ledger application the based on the business units you can create the reports even if the same data you when you send to gl for financial reporting each value represents one bu if you want to create the transaction the reports related to uh, bu 10 Yes, the data would be available in the GL also. You can prepare the reports with the financial reports. Okay, but uh, what I want to ask, I mean, uh, I got that. What I wanted to ask is the financial statements will not be on one BU, right? So it would ha have all the all those BUs. Yeah. Uh, so when so we are selecting, one, one second. When you are preparing the reports, you select the range of all the BUs. That's how you can prepare the financial reports. Say you have a 10 BUs, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 10. Now you want to prepare the reports for all the BUs data. Now when you are preparing the report, select as a all. You will maintain the parent and chain. Okay. Okay. All value you can select. So how many BUs you have for all the reports, all the BUs, the financial reports will get generated. So that we have a concept called as FRS, okay, Hyperion Financial Reporting in the Oracle Fusion GL application. We'll we'll work on that concept at that time. You can see how it happens. Okay. Okay. Only yeah. Any other questions? No questions. Then that's all for today. We'll connect tomorrow same time. We'll start with the application in the tomorrow session. Thank you all.